Now, the latest on the war in Ukraine. Authorities say that days of heavy shelling by Russian forces have killed at least 32 people in the southern region of Kherson. Long lines of traffic have built up as civilians leave the area in search of safety. Ukrainian forces liberated Kherson just two weeks ago. Moscow has since kept up a relentless barrage of primarily targeting power and water supplies. And I'm joined now by Dr. Marina Miron. She's a research fellow in the Center for Military Ethics at King's College in London. Good to have you with us. Uh, perhaps we could start, first of all, with your assessment. What impact are Russian attacks on Ukraine's critical infrastructure having in terms of Ukraine's military strategy? Of course, obviously, the, uh, there are two strands to this impact that Russia is seeking to generate with those attacks on critical infrastructure. On the one hand, it creates political pressure on Zelensky because people are left in winter in cold without power, without water. There is no heating. And so there might be an internal pressure upon the government, despite the fact that um, Elena Zelensky said that people are ready to wait for two or three years without electricity, that they will not give in. However, the situation is getting worse. And the second, perhaps the most important component is a military component, because in winter, the troops will have to be supplied. And now in order to provide heating for the population, Ukraine will have to rely on power generators, which use fuel um, as their main component. So that will create shortages of fuel, also slow down food su uh, supplies and food production and so on. So it will create a very um, heavy logistical strain and it will be difficult to sustain the troops. Right. And uh, on the other hand, uh, we know from uh, Britain's military intelligence uh, uh, that has suggested uh, that Russia is likely firing aging cruise missiles stripped of nuclear warheads at Ukrainian targets. What does that tell us about the state of the Russian offensive? It tells us that Russia is obviously slowly running out of its stocks. Um, for instance, uh, the likes of Iskander and Calibre missiles are getting very low, and it's very difficult for Russia under sanctions to replenish those stocks. And it will all ha also have to think if there is a bigger escalation with NATO, it will still need those missiles. So right now, it seems that Russia is switching to cheaper missiles. It's using air defense missiles from its S-300 systems, which are not that precise, and it has no shortage of those. And um, it also has a deal with Iran to replenish missiles. It's using drones to supplement missiles. It's also going to import uh, Fateh-110 and Zolfagar missiles from Iran, as well as artillery shells from North Korea. So it is preparing for a long war. All right, uh, Maria Miron the, from the Center of Military Ethics at King's College in London. Thank you so very much for your assessments. Thank you.